The Trump presidency officially ended today as Joe Biden was inaugurated as the 46th president of the United States. And, uh, wow. All right. So that's what it feels like when you're not grinding your teeth. I forgot. And, and I think, yeah, I can see colors again. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and McDonald's share price in Florida just went way up because America just got a brand new dad. And I'm gonna tell you something, I don't know about America yet, but I feel great again, I really do. Oh. Have a great show, Jimmy, and don't forget your breakfast. Thank you, cartoon birds. <laughs> As of noon Eastern time today, America welcomed the fresh young face of Joseph R. Biden as its 46th president. And despite the pandemic, this inauguration had it all. Former presidents, the youngest inaugural poet, an amazing singer wearing her own Etsy store, an old man on his way to the post office, and even a lady whose outfit just called me a broke In a show of national unity, all the former presidents paid their respects. Jimmy Carter sent a message, the Bushes were there, the Clintons were there, the Obamas were there, and that's all the former presidents. Joe Biden gave a great speech. He spoke convincingly about unity and healing. He said it's time to end this uncivil war. It was the kind of speech that made you want to call your grandpa and tell him you love him. It really was special. Just hearing a president talk honestly and straightforwardly about our challenges, promising to fight for democracy, or saying phrases like, my whole soul is in it, was both calming and jarring after four years of a president who, if he ever mentioned his soul at all, did so in context of selling it. Hello, is this the devil? How much can I get for the soul? 10 bucks, forget it. And everybody's listened to the soul call with the devil. It was a perfect call. I called the devil, I, we, I didn't sell the soul. I got it off, I said no, it was a perfect call. The theme of the day was America United, so President Biden called on the nation to step back from toxic partisanship. We can join forces, stop the shouting, and lower the temperature. And then somebody raises the temperature. I'm like, who touched the thermostat? You know the rules in Pop's house. And everyone's like, it wasn't me. And I'm like, well, I'm putting it back at 68. We're not heating the whole damn neighborhood here. <laughs> Jill, get me the cello tape. I'm taping this sucker down. There was a lot of discussion online about what Bernie was wearing which, as you can see, was his most festive mittens and a mask he found on the floor of his wife's Subaru. Sadly, Senator Sanders had to duck out early when his neighbor Larry called to say he found his hat. Later in the day, we got to see the Bidens enter the White House residence, but before they did, the White House itself went through a deep cleaning as soon as Trump left. There's a deep clean of the residence because of COVID, which includes, you know, vacuuming drapes, wiping baseboards, uh, cleaning chandeliers. Scrubbing out Diet Coke rings, pulling loose hair out of the drains, trying to get ketchup off the Constitution. You know, this is my last show of the Trump administration, and it feels like the end, it feels a welcome end to a chapter of my life. You probably feel that way too, but you know what they say, don't cry because it's over, cry because it happened. And there are better times ahead. I have to believe that a new president, a new vice president, no more Jared and a Ivanka and DJ TJ, Rudy Giuliani is back hanging upside down in his cave. However we fix this country, it's not the new administration's work alone. It is up to all of us, as it always is, in whatever way we can. And President Biden, Vice President Harris, you have our prayers, our best wishes, and our every confidence.